Hello, it's Duncan. I know that a lot of people watch this channel to learn about functional programming in Kotlin. Some of those that already know about functional programming in Kotlin have, how shall I put it, raised concerns about the JSON parser that I'm writing because, well, it really isn't very functional at all. It works by mutating its internal data structures as it processes characters, meaning that it's composed of impure functions. In fact, it's an old school object oriented design with classes encapsulating state. I didn't set out to write code one way or the other. This has been an honest experiment in writing a parser following the rules of TDD, and it's quite a surprise to me how deeply unfashionable the result has turned out to be. But I'm actually quite pleased with what we have, and, as you'll see in this episode, end up doubling down on mutability in order to process escape sequences inside JSON strings. We think that the only thing standing between us and being a proper JSON parser is string escapes. That is, the ability to embed special characters in a string. And here's the schema from json.org. It says that a string is a quote, any code point except a quote and a backslash, or control characters, or a quote, a backslash, and one of a quotation mark, reverse solidus, or a backslash, a solidus, or a forward slash, backspace, form feed, line feed, carriage return, horizontal tab, or four hex digits. We're looking on the right hand side. I think it might tell us that a hex digit is digit or A to F in upper or lower case. We currently handle one of those. I pulled it out into a separate string escapes test here. And that is the backslash quote that allows us to put a quote inside a string itself. So that if we have backslash quote in here, we see a literal quote character in our output. And we've implemented that in quite a cheeky way. When we see a literal quote character, we check to see whether the last character we saw was a backslash. And if it was, we replace the last character we saw with the literal quote. Now, that doesn't feel like that strategy is going to be viable for some of the other escapes, especially the Unicode escapes, where we're looking for a backslash U and four hex digits. So let's see whether we can refactor what we've got to use another little state machine inside our string state. And if we did that, then I think we would have, as usual, a private variable inside our string state that we're going to call state and is a parse state. Now, what should that start as? And I think the answer is that generally speaking, we are unescaped. So let's create ourselves a state for that. And we can implement unescaped with a nested class inside here. So let's say class unescaped is a parse state. And in order to be a parse state, we know that it needs an accept method. Now then, what I think we'd like to do is we'd like the accept method for our string state to ask its current state what to do. And this else branch here is the unescaped one. This is sort of the equivalent of escaped, and this is the end of our string. So I'm wondering whether we can say in here that we'll ask state to accept the character. Now, escaped could remember the characters, or it could do this thing, this char's append. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to take this out of here and put it into here. But now the problem is that escaped doesn't have any characters of its own, and it can't see the one in its parent. But it could see the one in its parent if we made it an inner class. Now, I think this may be the first time I've written an inner class in Kotlin. But the idea is that an inner class has access to all of its parent state. So when we create escaped here, it actually has a pointer to the string state inside which it was created. And that's why this chars here is that chars there. Okay, escaped except has to return something, but we're going to ignore it. So for now, I'm just going to say return this. Let's just see whether that passes the tests. Well, it does, that's good. So our logic seems solid at the moment, and we can do slightly better by having unescaped return this at the top level string state, and just have that as the return value out of here. Okay, so so far unescaped is just collecting the characters for us. I can't really think of a clever way to refactor to where I want to be, so I think I'm just going to try and write it in place. 
what we need is, I think, another state. So we're going to make another inner class for when we are escaped, which is going to be a past state, and so needs an accept method. And now escaped, if it sees a backslash, should return an escaped, because a backslash is the symbol that we are escaping. So in here, I think we're going to say return when char. And this is the case of the backslash, which is two backslashes inside a char in Kotlin. So in this case, we want to go to our escaped state. Otherwise, we want to carry on doing what we were doing before, which is this thing. So that's else, remember the character. And now I think we'll return ourselves. So that's this, so that we carry on getting the rest of the characters. And now that's not required, and this is a nice single expression. What is escape going to do? Well, it is going to say when the char. Now, in escaped mode at the moment, we recognize a quote. And if we see one of those, then we know to add that character, in fact, the literal quote to our characters. But now our work is done and we can go back to unescaped and for now, I think I'm just going to say we'll create a new one of those. Otherwise, well, there are lots of other escapes, but we haven't processed those yet, so we'll just throw a not implemented exception. Now, I'm pretty sure this won't work because the accept method in string state has been changed to accommodate, but let's run the test just to check. Oh, yes, that's very bad. Let's go up and remind ourselves what's happening at the top level is except for string state. Now this handling of the quote character is being handled by our escaped down here. But if we see a quote and we're not escaped, then we want to remember it and go to ground. So that will be the job of our escaped class here. So I think this is going to need to say, if I see a quotation mark, then I'm going to want to remember the characters, well, the character, So now I want to end the processing of this string. So that I think is going to be returning ground. That's the state before we were passing the string. And that's this bit here. And now we need to rewrite this except to delegate to our two states. So I think that's something like, we'll convert this back to a block body and we'll say, we're going to get our new state by asking our state to accept the character. And then when that new state, if that new state comes back as ground, that's the case where this unescaped here said we're done. So I think we're going to say when new state is ground, then we will return that ground. Else, well, we need to change our state. So that is state is new state. And we're going to return ourselves so that we are getting the next character and then we can delegate to the current version of the state. Phew, what do you think the chances are? Get rid of that and run. Goodness. Okay. I think we'll accept IntelliJ's offer to put new state into the when, which allows us to make this an expression body, although a little bit too far towards the end of the line there. Check that's still the same. And it is. And now I think we're in a position to process other escapes with our escaped state. So let's remind ourselves what we want to be using. Oh, there's a nice little set here of, I wonder if we can, oh, it's an image. That's a bit cheeky. Okay, then let's just bring that up, put it over to the right hand side of the screen. Maybe we can see them here if I move that like that. And I think I'm going to copy them all into the test all in one go. So duplicate these a few times. So that was our hello quote. We also want hello backslash backslash. That should be hello literal backslash. Hello backslash forward slash. That's an interesting case and it should just come out to forward slash. And then backslash B should be backslash B. F should be backslash F. Oh, except that that doesn't appear to be a valid Kotlin string escape. Let's come back to that one by moving it down there and commenting it out for now. So we had a B, we had a backslash N, a new line. That should put a new line character in. 
R for carriage return should come from backslash R. T for tab should go to backslash T. And then we've got some hex digits. Do you think we can make these all work at once? We'll check the test fails first of all. And it does. And the place that it fails is our to do here for other characters. So let's have a look. At the moment, we are doing just one of them. I'm going to move that over there, minimize that, and all in one go, maybe we will do one, two, three, four, five, probably backslash, 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 forward slash, which is just a forward slash, then B, N, R, and T, and then I think I've been a bit of an idiot because we're not actually getting a backslash B here, we're getting a B that comes after the backslash. So I should be able to take that out, but the character I want to append is a backslash B. That's a little bit complicated, isn't it? So N, because we've already swallowed the backslash in order to get into our escaped state, should append a backslash N single character. R, without the backslash, should go to the char, which is backslash R. And finally, T will go to backslash T. What do you think? Worth a try? It certainly was. Okay, now we have to deal with our form feed. And the issue here is that backslash F isn't an escape in a Kotlin string. Let's ask AI Assistant what is. How do I represent a form feed character in a Kotlin string? And the answer appears to be use a Unicode escape. So we'll take that and put it into there. Okay, that didn't work, but we'll do it by hand. Backslash U zero zero C. Should be four characters, so another zero. There we go. And so we'll run that to check that it fails. And it does. And then we can create another branch in here for the F for form feed, which should append a backslash U 000 C. Does that work? It does. Good. That Unicode escape reminds us that we have to do Unicode escapes. So let's duplicate it and say that we would like a similar thing with a Unicode escape of backslash U 000C to equal hello 000C world. Run that. Unsurprisingly fails. And now let's go and think about how to make it pass. So far, every escape has been a single character, but now we want to be able to accumulate multiple characters before we yield a value. Now we could try and do that inside escaped itself, but I think probably the easiest thing to do is to say that if we were to find ourselves with a backslash u, and so escaped would see just the u, then we've got nothing to do yet but return a state of Unicode, which doesn't exist yet. So let's write it, and that's going to be another inner class inside our string state. So we're going to write an inner class, Unicode, which again is going to be a pass state. What's it going to do? Well, when it accepts a character, we are going to want it to remember it until it has four of them and then convert that to a Unicode character and then yield it into the characters in the string. So I think we need a little bit of state, which is val, I think I'm going to call it digits because that's what we expect them to be. And we'll have a string builder to remember those characters. Okay, in our accept, when, we see a character. If the character is a hex digit, then we want to add it into our digits. And how can we tell? Well, we can ask the question, is it in the string of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F, and it turns out also A, B, C, D, E, F, because upper or lower case is acceptable. Right. In any of those cases, we want to append to our digits this character. And now if we have four digits, now we need to convert 
those four digits into a Unicode character. And I don't know how to do that, so I'm going to be a bit cheeky and I'm going to say we could get a test passing with returning the character of the only one we used in the test, which was our backslash U000C. And we need to put that character into these characters in our parent state. So we're going to mutate it and we're going to say chars dot append that special thing. And now we're unescaped, so we're going to return unescaped. What happens if we haven't returned four things? Well, then we are going to want to get the next character, so we're going to return ourselves. What happens in the else for the when, when our character isn't in that set? Well, in that case, I think we want to throw an illegal argument exception, and we'll worry about that message in a minute. Will this work? And it does. We're on a roll. We have, however, hard coded this very special value. So let's write a test to force us to do something better. So instead of C, let's see what 9999 looks like. So we'll put 9999 in there, run that. The answer is that 9999 is a rather nice house looking character. And so our, now our job is to parse these four nines as hex digits into a character. I don't know how to do that. So let's ask the AI. How do I parse a Unicode escape in Kotlin? Oh, well, that's not very helpful. It's saying that if I had them in a string inside my source, that's okay. I'm going to try now. What if the escape is in a string that I read from a file. Ah, I see what it's doing is it's taking the four digits, converting them to an int in base 16, and then taking the character result from that. That seems like a sensible solution. So let's go back here and we'll express the thing we want as a function, digits to char. Let's make that happen as extension function on string builder. And it's going to return char. And for now, we're going to return the thing we know will work in the one case, which is backslash u000c. Just check that. Passes everything but our one case. Good. And now in here, I think we can say this to string to int radix 16 to char. Does that work? Goodness, yes. Okay, there are obviously quite a few error conditions here we haven't handled. So let's go and write some tests for those. First of all, what about an escape that isn't in this list? So I think we should say, if we've got a backslash X, for example, then we'd expect that to throw, I think. What would we expect? Well, we've been using illegal argument exception. And what message should we have? Well, I think maybe illegal escape. And we know the character is an X, but we could give a clue by saying backslash X, except that inside this string that would have to have two backslashes just to confuse things. Run that. Well, we were getting a to do. I think that's okay. Let's just reformat this. And now let's go and find the code where we were throwing. That is here. And it's this not yet implemented here. So this is the case where we aren't one of all these things. So I think this is going to be throw illegal argument exception. And what did we say? We said illegal escape something. Copy that from there into there. And this would be the character dollar char, I think. Run that. Oh dear. Ah, still needed to put that like that. And that's better. Before I go on, I'm a little bugged by the size of that method there. So I think we could probably process Unicode on its own first. So take that one here 
and put it at the top and then say else and have another nested when to process these others and that would allow us to move the escaped the unescaped that we return out of here so we say else when da -da 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 i think here we then return unescaped and that would allow us to get rid of all of these unescaped in here so if i do take that thing and then find all of those from here on down that looks like it i should be able to delete those lines and then remove the braces from all the one entries much nicer does it work Oh, it would if it compiled, I suspect. So that issue must be that I've messed up string state all the way up here, and I suppose a curly bracket in there. Wonderful. Reformat. And now, get rid of that annoying black line. See the shape of this is now Unicode is special. Else, all those other things, but all returning unescaped. Good. And now let's add ourselves some killers for our Unicode state. So these are both good. What happens if we just said backslash u and then had something that wasn't a hex digit, for example? I'm going to put a space in here so we can see what's going on. We would expect that to throw our illegal argument exception. Let's see whether it does. When it does, that's good. What sort of message would we like is equal to, well, I'm just going to say, blah, blah, see what we actually get out, see whether it's good enough. It turns out we didn't have a message at all. I wonder why that is. Let's have a look. So that's this illegal argument exception here, which happens when we've got a character that wasn't in this set here. So I think this should be illegal Unicode escape, and we'll put in the backslash u, but we need to escape that, so that's just like that. And now we can put in our digits so far, plus the character that we have just processed. Remember that as a message. Go back here, and can never remember whether I have the quotes or not. Probably did, and I did. And this should say it is illegal backslash u x. Check. We're good try a version of that with a valid thing and then an invalid thing. So if I said 9x, I would expect 9x out here. And do. What about not enough digits? So now I'm going to say I had 9, 8, 7, but not the 6. Run that. So what do we actually get? We got an illegal argument exception and what it's actually said was 987. And I think we've taken the space there as part of the Unicode. So that looks like what we're saying. But I don't think it's what we want to say. I think we want to say something like, in this case, we know the white space is a sort of terminator. So I think we should probably be saying something like that, which will fail. But in here, we can say, in Unicode, we can say it wasn't one of those, but now we can check whether the char is white space and if it is, not add the character on the end. So I think that might be taking this thing here, probably just that as a variable. Well, that really didn't work very well, did it? So let's take that by hand. So now we're going to say val escape is that thing so that's escape but if char is white space it is something different so we're not going to put the char in there is that good splendid and now then i think we have to consider the case of finishing the string before we finish unicode escape so if we were in here and 
we tried to say mu897 and then we finished our string. What do we actually get? Ah, well, interestingly, we seem to have included the quote on the end of that as well. So we were in our Unicode state and we accepted the quote that didn't terminate our string, it just came through to here. So I think probably we could just say char equals our quote, or is white space, we don't want to include it in the error message. Something a little bit unsatisfactory about that, but I think actually the error is quite good. Overall then, let's have a look at our string escapes. I think we may have it covered, so let's check that in with process string escapes. One thing to check, C is never used here. Ah, oh, that was part of a refactoring that crashed IntelliJ. And we'll just use this as a time to look at string state again. So we start in an unescaped state. We accept characters here by giving them to our state. If it says we're done, we're done. Otherwise we just move state on. Our value, oh, we've got an illegal argument exception here without a message. So I think this is where our string is not terminated with a quote. Have a look in our tests. Here we are. So this is our legal argument exception. I think it's this case here. So I think we should say here that the message is equal to unterminated string. And we could give a clue that the string is, let's put the quotes into the error message like that. Run to check that and we'll take this into here. This is our legal argument exception and the thing in the message should be the thing that's in the buffer. So that's dollar jars. Drop that maybe onto its own line, run that and that's better. Unescaped is a parse state that goes to escaped if it sees a single backslash character which we have to escape ourselves in Kotlin with another backslash and finishes our string if it sees a quote. Otherwise it just remembers the character in the buffer for the string above it and escaped we've been working in. It transitions to Unicode if its first character is a U. Otherwise in all these other cases there's a single character to be appended into the buffer and then it's done. And Unicode as a state collects four characters. I think that's good, so we will check it in. And this looks like I have upgraded the Kotlin compiler. So commit that. Splendid. Looking back at the work we've done today, I expect to take quite a bit of flack. Lots of people have commented on previous videos about the amount of mutability that's going on in this parser. And I suppose in many ways this channel is the gateway drug to functional programming in Kotlin. And yet here we are with string state, which unapologetically has a string builder in it and appends to it. But even worse now, our inner classes are mutating the outer class. Now I suppose we could have arranged it so that unescaped and escaped and so on implemented valued. And string state, as we did with array state and other places, would update its state when its parse state changed. That would make the working of string state more consistent with the working of the other states that in turn manage an internal state but we make string state itself more complicated. I think I surprised myself with just how mutable this solution has turned out to be. It feels like as soon as we allowed mutability in in order to collect characters in our string state, that there was a door that we couldn't close. I'm reasonably unapologetic about it though, because none of this mutation is visible from outside. Now, I suppose in principle, an array could ask an unfinished string state what its value is at the wrong time, and then ask it later and it would see changes in string state. But as an entire system, if we go to the top level, this parse, the only entry point, is a pure function. It has no externally visible side effects. It does throw exceptions, which is another style thing we could think about. But all of the mutability is hidden inside the private implementation in the lines below. Now that everything is working and we have a reasonably comprehensive test suite, we're in a position to refactor this to maybe make it more functional. But if we do that, I think we should certainly keep our eye on performance. I haven't measured it, but at the moment this is a single pass parser that doesn't have to read ahead in the stream, reports errors pretty much as quickly as it possibly could, and does very little copying of data structures. 
I think it may have the potential to be really quite quick. I haven't measured it yet, but certainly any refactoring from here on, I would like not to make it any slower or any less correct. On the subject of correctness, a little Googling brought up this article from the last decade, which goes into detail about the JSON specification and the extent to which it is or isn't respected by different parsers. This is backed by GitHub repo, which contains over 300 tests for JSON parsers. It doesn't check their output so much as whether or not they correctly or incorrectly accepted the input. Now our test suite is a lot more ad hoc than this, really just full of things that I thought of that should parse or shouldn't parse, but this has been test-driven development and you might expect then that the test would be, well, at least adequate. In order to find out, next week I'll run this parser against the JSON test suite to see how good a job we've really done. If you'd like to see that episode, then please subscribe to the channel. Press the like button so Google recommends it to other people. The code is available on GitHub. The link is in the show notes below. So if you don't like what I'm doing, you can play with the code and see if you can do better. And finally, chapter 22 of the book that I wrote in that price, called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, is titled Classes to Functions, but goes through the process of writing a CSV parser from scratch in a function style, and then compares it to the Apache Commons CSV library. I think it's my favorite chapter of the book, and you can find details in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.